Sanjay Maru virtually alongside two of the most exciting performers in all of professional wrestling. You know them as the Motor City Machine Guns, Impact X Division Champion Chris Sabin and Impact World Champion Alex Shelley. And gentlemen, as we look ahead to Border City Wrestling's 30th anniversary this Saturday, can you talk to me a little bit about what this milestone means to the both of you? Sure, I'll go first. Uh, I think for me, it's almost a look back on not just the history of the company, but my career as a pro wrestler. And I started training with Scott in 2003. He was on the first BCW show for myself in my career in 2003 at the Chicharo Club. And to see all the talent that's come through those doors and gone on to make such an impact in pro wrestling over the next two decades is absolutely unbelievable. It really is hard to believe. And I think about all the opportunities that BCW afforded me, all the support that Scott himself gave me, but then the entire community that was at the first BCW show, many of whom are around today, that supported me as well. And I really feel like uh, the term homegrown talent applies. Yeah, you know, it means a lot. Border City Wrestling, along with Scott DeMore, gave me my start in wrestling. Um, um, you know, there the match that I had at Border City Wrestling when I wrestled against Sabu, that was the match that actually got me my tryout for TNA and then got me my job after that. So, uh, you know, just a lot of memories, a lot of community, you know, a lot of people who have been there early on in the days are still around today. So it's going to be just one giant big old family reunion. It's going to be really cool to see everyone and celebrate Border City Wrestling. Gentlemen, I think when people look at one of you, they just automatically think of the other. Can't imagine Chris Saban without Alex Shelley and vice versa. Can you talk to me a little bit about the genesis of this tag team so many years ago? How did you guys become united as the Motor City Machine Guns as a tag team at the very start? Sure. So that happened in 2006. And um, I'll try and give you the fast version, but there are a lot of details I on. Uh, I left TNA in 2005 when there was a change in bookers. And as every booker comes in, they'll have their crop of talent who they want to build around. And I wasn't part of the crop for this particular booker. So I took it upon myself to not give up. And I thought, you know what? Uh, pardon my French, but I'm going to shove it up his ass. And I'm going to go all over the world and I'm going to get really, really, really good. So I worked really, really hard making contacts and wrestling as much as I could. And I was already wrestling in some really good places. One of the things that I was lucky enough to participate in was this Zero One Max, which was probably the third or fourth most popular company in Japan at the time, USE show. And this was right before the WWE ECW reunion. So I had an impressive showing on the show. I actually got shunted into the main event because Super Crazy got pulled. He had just gotten signed by WWE and I was in a TLC match against Masato Tanaka. And I stayed on for the full tour. After that tour, I was a full-time Gaijin for Zero One. Gaijin is foreigner for about a year. And within that year, I went back to TNA because Scott Demore became the booker. Uh, in particular, they needed somebody to wrestle with Shocker. And I knew Lucha Libre pretty well. And within the year, I was wrestling for Zero One Max, TNA, Ring of Honor, and really, really like hit my stride. Zero One Max really, really liked me. And they wanted me to challenge for their tag team titles, which I'd already challenged for two times. So one partner, Brian Kendrick, we lost. Another partner, Sanjay Dutt, we lost. But they said, this third time, we want you to pick your partner. So I picked Saban. At that point, we had been awesome opponents and best friends. And I thought, man, he's going to kill it. If he comes over here for zero one max, I know the company's going to love him. And I know the fans are going to love him. So we challenged at the main event of Cork and hall against Ikido Hidaka and Minoru Fujita. And these guys in 2006 were like the team. I think Tokyo sports voted them MVP of the, all the tag teams in Japan. And we beat them in zero one max said, these belts are yours now take them back to North America and defend them. And we defended them at PWG and in Canada for a company called UWA for about a year before TNA actually put us together as a Motor City Machine Guns. But by that point, when people saw us for the first time, they were blown away. They didn't realize that we had been working together for, again, about a calendar year and had worked so hard to become a cohesive unit and develop this style that nobody had seen at that point in time. And what does it mean for you guys to all these years later still be competing and performing? at such a high level it shows our hard work and you know everything we put in through the years our longevity 
um, taking care of ourselves, our love and passion for wrestling. You know, we're still doing it, you know, almost 20 years later. So, uh, it, you know, that just shows that our dedication to this sport and professional wrestling and, you know, shows the fact that we're both singles champions right now, but we can still compete as a tag team as well. So whether we're tag team, whether we're singles, it's nice to uh, always have a buddy by your side. You know, you know we're always traveling together, um, whether whether we're teaming or not. You know, so it, it's nice. It's good to have a partner, man. Ariel Helwani asked this next question to the Usos, so I want to ask this question to you guys, considering you guys are two of the greatest tag team wrestlers of all time. Would we ever see a day when we see a feud between you guys? Chris Saban versus Alex Shelley. Do we envision that happening at some point in your careers? I can pretty confidently say that while you might see a long term program, you might see a series of matches. You're not going to see a blood feud. You're not going to see me say, I hate him. You're not going to see me kick him in the balls and then pin him. Right. Like that's just not going to happen. There's no need for it. Nobody really wants to see that, to be honest with you. And quite frankly, I just not do it that's not the point of this. The point is we make each other better, whether we're in a tag team or we're opponents. And that's been the story of our career. That's rubbed off on a lot of other people who have been alongside us like Jay White, like Kushida. So I see no reason that that's going to happen. I agree. You know, I, I think we're uh, a very unique tag team in the fact that, you know, we can always, we can go off on our own and we can also team together. And there's always that option, right. That we're talented singles wrestlers and we're a talented tag team. So I think that provides way more options than us turning on each other and having some big blood feud. Then you, then you got to figure out how to get us back as a team. Right. You know, nah, I'd, I'd rather just stick as a team and, you know, if we wrestle each other, we wrestle each other, but it's going to be a good, like friendly competitive match. It's not going to be like you said, any sort of blood feud or anything like that. And guys, at this point in your careers, you both could really accomplish anything anywhere. So I've got to ask, what does the next one year, the next three year, the next five years look like for not just you guys as a tag team, but both of you individually? What does the immediate future hold for Alex Shelley? What does the immediate future hold for Chris Saban? You know, that's a good question. And my answer might be a little bit different than what you're used to getting when you ask that to people. Um, I've got myself in a lot of trouble mentally in terms of worrying too much about the future. And to me, you worry about things too far down the line and you're probably wasting energy because it's not going to turn out how you have envisioned it in the present. So I take things as they come. And I decided when I came back to wrestling, especially after getting inoculated, uh, when I worked in healthcare about two years ago, I was just going to step up to the plate and do my best with whatever pitch is thrown at me. I'm not going to worry about the ninth inning when I'm in the first. It served me well for the past two years. I do the best with what's put in front of me. And that seems to be working pretty well. The other thing too, is I've got this unique perspective from working in physical medicine for years where people would count on these things happening down the line and something could happen in life, not just wrestling, but life that takes it away that quickly. Therefore I try and treat this profession and every match is a gift. Like I am able to do this. I am lucky to do this. This isn't a job. This is something that I'm gifted. And that's really, truly helped me. Yeah. I'm not worried about the future whatsoever. I know that the choices I make today affect the future. And I, as long as I, um, you know, live today with honesty and integrity, be a good person, work hard, that everything will work out in the end. So as long as I take care of myself today, I know the future will take care of itself. And gentlemen, you won't just be a part of Border City Wrestling's 30th anniversary. I understand you'll be helping to headline this show. Can you talk to me about the feeling of just after so many years and Border City Wrestling being such pivotal parts of your infancy in this business, now Border City Wrestling's 30th anniversary, you get to be at the top of the card here? It's obviously an honor. And I think really what ices that particular cake is the fact that it's against Trey Miguel and Zach. And those are two kids who I hold near and dear to my heart. Um, I retrained Trey about three, four years ago, and Zach, somebody I helped out quite a bit too. And if there was ever a team that was going to be the next Motor City Machine Guns, I really can't think of anybody that that would apply more to than the Rascals. It's really cool, especially when I think back on the old Border City Wrestling shows. You know, it was like Larry Destiny, Otis Apollo, you know, Scott DeMore, all these guys in the main event, and then to see that, you know, we're in that place now. So it's really cool to see how long we've come along or how how 
we've come along over the years, you know, how we've progressed up on the card and to be the main event and represent Border City Wrestling today. I, you know, I hope some of those guys are there, honestly. I think it would be really cool to see like Otis Apollo, Larry Destiny, all those old Border City Wrestling. Maybe the sig- syndicate can get back together and stuff, you know. You never know, but it's really cool. And I am happy we're wrestling the Rascals as well. We have a really good rapport with those guys. Um, they're super talented and it, it should be great, man. It's it's I'm excited.